another beat from Upper Aerial Vision. Yes. My big, my big question is, which, which one am I going to put in the car? I want to put one of these babies in the car and leave one at home, but I don't know which one to do. I, I'm undecided. Um, there are so many differences between them, and some of the main differences. I'm sorry if I'm. I, I don't fit in the scene over here. But there's so many differences and so many similarities to them. Of course, they're both C4 FM radios. They're both uh, uh, do 50 watts. They both are, are dual band. They're both made by Yesu, but the menu systems are different, and. You know, the FTM 400, yeah, it's touchscreen, the 300 isn't, right? But as a touchscreen monitor, it makes it easier to, to enter in, uh, uh, it makes it enter in easier to tag different frequencies when you keep put them into memory. Um, but it is kind of still simple to put things into memory and edit them in the 300. I almost find it a little easier, except that it's not touchscreen. And you have more character space in the 300 to tag memory than you do in the 400 and there's more screen space with buttons that go around and that you can touch screen on the 400 but then there's more buttons on the 300 so and some of those buttons that are on the 300 they're touch screen buttons on the 400 which take up some of that um, take up some of that space on the screen and I don't find that I'm lacking on screen size I don't find that I, I need more screen on my 300 it just I'm not seeing that really like I, I don't feel like I should have more screen it's crisp it's clear well let's let's get into this this uh, installing of the, the Bluetooth unit so, it's very small it's a small little box it comes in it's like I feel like I just opened up a Cracker Jack box and I got a prize, an $80 prize. A prize. Thank you to, to the guys over in Ham Radio Outlet that always take care of me. Uh, Harry, Ken, Ron, you guys are awesome. They always got what I need. This is it. I don't know. Let's go for your back. I don't want to change the focus on this. Um, I guess I'll, I'll give you a good, I mean, you guys have probably seen this all over the web, so you don't need to see it in great detail, but it's, it's just a little chip, and um, it's okay, it's nice. So I'm using this Makita drill, and yes, it has torque on it, and it's the right tip, so I'm not gonna over torque it or strip anything because I set the torque just right, and I'll set the torque even lower too. But um, while, I'll put it to a four, but while I'm taking the parts out, Let's go over this stuff. Now, you don't remove the four top screws. Those are the speakers, the ones that are closest to the speaker. But you do have to remove the outer screws. One, two, three, four, five, six on the side, seven, eight on the side. So we'll remove the, the top ones and then the side ones. And then we'll be careful not to, not to, to pull the wire too hard in the speaker. I'm using a drill, you probably should use a hand tool, but I'm using a drill because I want to make it quick for you guys. I don't want to be doing this video all day. Let's get right to it. As I take these screws out, I'm going to just check to make sure they're all the same size so I, you know, I kind of know where It's a pretty easy install. I've seen it done in the web before. Um, Let's check it out. Actually, let, let me move the camera closer and let me move the camera overhead so you get a, a better look at what's going on. I just took a four. Yeah, I think it is. Sorry. So, oops. That's the piece right there. Let's get to it, guys. Let's get to it. So, we got to take off these screws. And let's see if they're the same screw. So, we know we're not screwing anything up. Yeah, they're the, they're the same screw. So we're good on, we're good there. Let's take this one off. Flip to the other side. Oh, I don't want to scratch anything. Yes. This is going awesome so far. I know. This is going awesome so far. Probably shouldn't say that too soon, but oh, and man, I just flipped that thing off way too fast. 
Good thing I know. Good thing I know where it goes at. So be careful. That just popped right off. Oh gosh. I know that goes there. Whew. So I know this screen has to. This has to come out this way. They, they made it. I guess I'll have to remove these two also. Gosh, that popped out really fast. Now these screws are different. Those head screws are different, so I'll put those aside somewhere else. I'll put them on top. Usually I let Harry at Ham Radio Outlet take care of all my internal work, but I felt pretty confident on this one. See any other screws? I know there's something latching on there that comes right out that way. I know those two screws are the head unit. I'll leave that there. And now, it doesn't go there. It goes here. Hope you guys are seeing that. Okay. Now, I could be, kind of looks like I can't screw this up, but I've been known to screw things up, so I won't. I'll try not to screw it. And I want to make sure those match, and it does match. I kind of look at it from the side. Gosh, I don't know why. I'm, I don't know why I'm so nervous. Oh, that that snapped in real nicely. Yeah, that snapped in really nicely. Now we'll just put it all back together. Now I know most of you say, "Well, you should test it first, Lewis. You should test it first. I know, I probably should, but I put this together, and I know this snapped in there. There it goes. That's what I wanted. To, that's what I wanted to feel. That snapping. When things snap into place, it's, it's awesome. Now I want to make sure I set this torque up so it's not on the drill. And I'm going to set this torque all the way down to about four. So make sure that I'm not stripping anything. Put this screw back in, like so. Put that in place. There it is. I don't, I don't need to use the torque. I did not need to use the torque. I just, I mean, I'll, I'll get it all tight worked in later on but well, that's not grabbing so there it is a good snapping sound is a good sound there it is and I did twerk a little bit that that worked out well so I'll twerk that a little bit awesome now let's let's get this thing back in place so we know this guy goes over here let me move this around a bit so you can see what I'm doing there this guy is gonna go in there and the last video I saw, the guy says, well, you can't put that in the wrong way, so don't don't worry about that. But I'm always worried. I think it goes in this way. And we'll see if I can't put it in the wrong way, because I've been known to put things in the wrong way. I don't have tweezers on me, and my fingers are kind of stubby, so let's see if I can do this right. And that's not, that doesn't feel like the right way. Real gentle with it. I probably should get some tweezers. Can I do it without tweezers? Oh, that, that felt good. That felt just how it goes. So I'm gonna put this cat back in. And that felt pretty good. I'm pretty comfortable with that. Now, I'll just screw these babies back in. That worked out well. I like to get the other side first. Get this side, get the opposite side. Oh yeah, that torque good. Put the torque real low to make sure I don't strip anything. I'd recommend you do this with a hand screwdriver unless you got something you can torque with. So this is going to spin. While I'm cooking this up, the wife is in the kitchen with my daughter cooking up some salmon. That felt good. We'll get these guys put back in. That felt good. I just make all the heavy pan type things up there. That good. One more screw it. Oh, screw it. Oh, screw it. <laughs> it is. So 
I'll hand tighten those in later on. But for now, let's get it all plugged in and make sure it works. That was a pretty, pretty easy install, right? Except for the part where I popped that thing off like that. That, that was cool. <laughs> let's put this aside. We will power this thing back up, go through the unit and check the Bluetooth and see if it 